there is a guy who just announced that he is donating $100 million to Joe Biden's campaign, specifically in the state of Florida. That guy's name is Michael Bloomberg. You may know him as Mini Mike. But Michael Bloomberg, let's go back a few months before coronavirus and COVID-19 and before the Democrats rallied around the worst candidate to ever run for president. And there were still a bunch of people on stage debating, hoping to get that nomination. Michael Bloomberg entered the race, get this, because he didn't like any of the candidates. Michael Bloomberg thought Donald Trump was a horrible president. He thought every single one of the candidates was worthless. He said, I'm going to enter this race. I'm the only person that can be president. None of the Democrats on this stage, none of them, are, a, are have what it takes to be president of the United States. He changed parties from, from Republican to Democrat. He spent $100 million of his own money. He went to two debates, got taken down by Elizabeth Warren. Br I mean, brutally, dis just totally, you know, dismembered by Elizabeth Warren. And when it came to Super Tuesday, the only thing he won was American Samoa. Couldn't win a single Super Tuesday state. $100 million is what Mike Bloomberg pumped into his own presidential campaign, and he couldn't even win a single delegate on the United States mainland. Any of the 50, couldn't win a single delegate from any of the 50 states. Luckily, American Samoa was there to make him look like not as big an idiot as he actually was. Now, he's pledging $100 million for the Joe Biden campaign in Florida because Florida is a must-win state. This is great news for Donald Trump because it is so it is so tight here in Florida. Donald Trump, they'll tell you it's it's either a dead heat, it's a toss up or Joe Biden has a, has a slight advantage. Joe Biden has no advantage in the state of Florida. If you look at any of these boat parades or 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 truck car and truck motorcycle rallies that go up and down I-95 throughout Florida, Donald Donald Trump has a clear-cut advantage in what is a red state where Ron DeSantis is the governor, where Rick Scott is our senator, where Marco Rubio is our other senator. When you look at the Latinos for Trump movement all across Miami, when you look at the support that Donald Trump has in those southern Florida areas, which are typically the bluest areas, when you see the support he has in Tampa and Clearwater, when you see clearly the support he has all over northern Jackson, uh, northern Florida, here in Jacksonville and, and you know, the surrounding area, St. Augustine and, and Daytona Beach, when you look at all that, it's, it spells doom for Joe Biden. So much so that Michael Bloomberg has to come to the rescue and pledge another 100 million of his own dollars to try to save this election by pumping commercials on TV so that Joe Biden won't lose Florida. It's, it's, it's the best news Donald Trump could have heard about this state all weekend. I mean, that is, they, you keep reading all these stories, Donald Trump financial crunch, Donald Trump campaign in trouble. Donald Trump keeps winning no matter how much the Democrats raise or spend. And now that they're trying to get an outside investor to funnel $100 million into Florida just so they can save it, that's huge news for the Trump campaign. It's huge news for conservatives. Because all along, you've heard about how all oh, these swing states are all going Biden. Biden's got this significant lead. Fox News just moments ago said that the Biden lead is down to five points nationally. And if you look at Rasmussen today, the presidential approval poll, which is not a general election poll. It's not who would you vote for? How are you registered? It's do you approve of the way the president is running the country? And after the whole Bob Woodward nonsense from his rage book and his claims that Donald Trump knew about this coronavirus and how deadly it was and lied to the American people. And after a whole two weeks of bogus Atlantic Journal magazine reporting that Donald Trump called Marines suckers and losers for dying in battle, which was clearly made up news. After three weeks of that, after all of the mayhem, after everybody beating up on Donald Trump on every single news organization, Donald Trump has a 51% job approval rating on Rasmussen. And if 51% of the people approve of the job somebody's doing, then they're not going to look for someone else to do that job, especially if that someone else is Joe Biden.